welcome to a really, really special um, daily recipe. So it is our 101st show in a row, uh, and it is the final one that is going to be a consecutive um, day that we'll be hosting and showing you guys a recipe. Um, so we have been doing this for uh, 101 days now. <laughs> Um, and I know that quite a lot of you are cooking along today, which is amazing. It's so, it's so lovely that, that so many of you guys um, are cooking along today. Let me just uh, say hello to everybody who's joined. So we've got Lara, Justine, five other people. I'm sorry, I don't know who that's going to be. So hello to you all. Um, Colleen, uh, Ingrid is here today as our admin. So thank you so much, Ingrid, for doing that. Uh, Patricia, Denise, Karen, um, Christine, Louise, Faviola, Joss, um, Sarah, Mandy. Hello, hello, hello. Um, and thank you so much for, for cooking along with us. So before we actually get started, uh, I've just got to bring you guys over to uh, this. So uh, let me just get back onto the page so that I can actually show you guys this. There we go. There we go. Let's get rid of that. There we go. So this is uh, Justine's cake, Justine's brownie uh, that she did in her garden with fireworks. So <laughs> how amazing is that? How amazing is that? That is quite something, quite something. So thank you so much for going to all of that effort. Uh, it's really, really, really appreciated. Um, and you know, you guys have just been like such, uh, so amazing, so amazing uh, during this whole time. Um, everyone has been so lovely. Uh, we haven't had any like negative comments or anything like that. So, um, you know, it's really been so lovely to also see you guys getting on with each other and uh, creating friendships. Um, and I've seen, you know, on Facebook that a lot of you have connected with each other and that you support each other in, um, in you know, all the, all the food that you make, which is amazing. Really, really amazing. I love connecting people. Um, so, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jesse says you can see why I did the garden. Yes, I can. I'm sure your landlord would, uh, would thank you for that. Um, and, oh, Mercedes, thank you for joining us. Uh, oh, George says, this is going to sound like hyperbole, but it's not. You've changed my life. That's very lovely. I am using ingredients and spices I've never used before. Marmite, cauliflower leaves. Uh, using more traditional ingredients in new ways to make healthy, very tasty, inexpensive meals. Good, good, good. That's exactly what we want. And learning new cooking techniques at the same time. Uh, you've given me confidence to cook and try new vegan dishes. And most importantly, you've created a global community of vegan chefs that I'm very grateful to be a part of. I did tell myself I wasn't going to cry today. So <laughs> I might be out the window, though. Um, so thank you for sharing your considerable gifts, your smiles, and your laughter with all of us. Well. Look, can I just say, like, it's it's as much about me as it is about you guys, um, because you know, um, each one of you makes this an amazing community. Um, so uh, let's just say hello to Julie and Anne. I think Anne, are you cooking along today? Uh, Lynn, um, <laughs> Lynn says, <laughs> oh, well, Michelle shows what will I now do at four a.m. Sleep. <laughs> I can't believe you've been watching at 4am. That is really, really impressive, Lynn. Thank you. Uh, where where are you, by the way, for watching at 4am? Uh, David is cooking long. He is prepped and ready. Christine, it was, I've got a really good question about the choice of the pan. It's either 16 by 25, is that centimetres? Or 21 by 33. Do I go smaller pan, um, thicker brownies, or choose one that's too big? I would say... Um, have a smaller pan that will produce quite thick brownies. I would go along that route because I don't like flat brownies. You know, um, you know, you do want you do want a bit um, a bit of a chunkiness there. Uh, Anna, thank you for joining us, and Paul and Robert, um, Elizabeth, uh, being a big part of my lockdown memories. Oh, mine too. 
Mine too. Uh, and Anna has a good 30 minute break from her meeting so she can join us for a bit. Colleen is cooking along too. Oh, Lynn, you're in California. Okay, that kind of makes up for the fact that you have to get up at 4am to watch. <laughs> But thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. Um, and so that she made her brownies last night. Okay. And she thought, she, yeah. so um, so Annie has um, a grandchild on the way. Uh, so it was just in case of that, but there's a false alarm. Okay. So, uh, and she'll post the brownie photo later on in Facebook. Thank you for that. Um, and that does remind me uh, that um, I do want you guys to post your pictures. Okay, that's like part of the deal. Okay, I give you recipes, you give me photos, because I love seeing all your photos of, of the creations that you've made from my recipes. And hello to Jeff, who's tuning in from work. Um, and so, of course, we always have a rainbow in my kitchen, and you guys have to guess what is underneath the rainbow. But it's a fairly easy one today, so I'll show you. We don't just have one rainbow. We have multiple rainbows <laughs> to represent represent the 101 shows. There isn't 101 rainbows today. Okay, just just uh, beware. I don't want you to get disappointed. So this is what is underneath my rainbow today. Um, so these are all rainbows that I made with, um, with fondant icing. So Dr. Utka, fondant icing, they have vegan icing, uh, vegan fondant icing, which is great for um molding so you know you can use it just like you did in play with play-doh when you were in nursery um and so what is underneath my rainbows multiple today is um a big thank you to you guys for uh being so blooming awesome so nobody needs to guess it today sorry colleen <laughs> Sorry, Colleen. I've also um, put a bit of sparkle on there as well. So I put some edible, edible sparkle on there, but I don't know if you can see that very well. Uh, so that is my big thank you to all of you guys. And Colleen quite rightly says it's rainbow paradise. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. So if you guys do need any, any inspiration for, uh, or any help with decorating, you know, and decorating tips and stuff like that, then do mention that during this recipe today, because it's quite an easy recipe. To be fair, like brownie is a really, really easy recipe. Um, there's just a few um, tips, really, techniques that you just have to watch out for. And then you'll be making amazing brownies, absolutely amazing brownies. Okay, so let's get started. So I'll bring you guys back over to the overhead cam. Um, and uh, here are our ingredients. Uh, so first of all, we've got our chocolate. Um, so just to tell you guys, I'm actually making a half recipe today because I've already made a half recipe. So this is half of the of the brownie recipe. And I actually used um, a loaf tin for this, okay? Um, so that gives you a good idea of, you know, what the size will be in the end. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna make a, another half recipe. Otherwise, me and Jeff would be eating brownies for days and I know, I know we wouldn't like that. I know we wouldn't like that at all. Sharon, thank you for joining us on our 101st show in a row. Okay, so we have our dark chocolate over here. So I said around like 60% uh, cocoa chocolate uh, plus. So, you know, if you like your chocolate really, really dark like I do, then feel free to use, you know, 75, 80%, 85% uh, uh, cocoa chocolate. That's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine. I would say with chocolate and using it for cooking, just beware um uh oh sorry uh, let me just answer sarah's question sarah says which size loaf tin okay let me show you my loaf tin there we go so i think that this is called a one pound loaf tin yeah and by the way this is completely destroyed completely destroyed but i'm going to use a liner so it's absolutely fine i can keep on using this uh but yeah it's a one pound uh, loaf tin um so with our chocolate um there is a lot of just regular eating chocolate that you can use for a recipe like this. And this is just regular eating chocolate, it isn't cooking chocolate. But there is some um, eating chocolate that when you melt it, it goes a bit funny. Um, and it might be a bit too thick to use in a recipe like this. So just beware of that. Um, you know, I had a discussion with Justine about a recipe that she was making um, from the online course and we drilled down to figure out that the problem was um, the chocolate was from a company called, oh gosh, what is it called? 
it's a new it's a new chocolate brand out it's available in supermarkets it's called no no something i don't know anyway um it, it when i looked at the ingredients it actually includes like uh some sort of like rice powder or rice onion or something like that and a few other ingredients that we wouldn't normally get in chocolate um so no mo there we go ingrid thank you so much yes no mo uh yeah and so we do have to kind of like be aware of that because sometimes with eating chocolate they can just put like really weird things in it um but i use lint so that's always like a go-to quite easy um chocolate for me to use I, I know that i like it as well um i have also used the raw halo chocolate but for a recipe like this i would use the raw halo chocolate that is um quite high in cocoa um so you can use that but you just need to make sure that uh when your chocolate is melted down then it is quite runny okay uh because then we'll be able to mix it in to the recipe really really well okay yes thank you for mentioning those uh sarah says since you use a one pound tin for half batter do we need a double size tin okay so um i think in the original recipe i used something that was like 25 by 30 centimeters 20 or 25 by 25 actually because i think it's square um so yeah it would be you know Oops, sorry uh it would be twice this size but to be honest right with a brownie all you have to do is you have to figure out so you've got this amount of batter um and how thick do you want them because there is a little bit of flexibility with that like you can have them like really like quite thick um or you know a bit thinner but i wouldn't go any thinner than two inches yeah because i think that's a bit of a disappointment when a brownie is less than two inches thick um you know I, I want my brownie to be a bit more kind of like bigger than that really um so denise is uh wearing her school apron good 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 and cooking along with us uh and carl has joined um i don't know if you've got any any questions any um jokes for us today but it's you know it's the 101st show in a row so we definitely need we definitely need some jokes uh paul says from wikipedia the 101 dalmatians a 1956 novel written by Dodie Smith. I love that film. I love that film. I was very scary though when I was a kid. Very scary. I was always really scared for the dogs. I think that that's like a precursor to me going vegan. You know, like I remember like having all those feelings about animals when I was a kid. Anyway, Louise said 101. <laughs> I'm so glad you're talking Tim's. Okay. Yeah. So with brownies. Um, it just, as I said, depends on how thick or thin that you want them. And really, you know, we do just want to use what is in our kitchen. Um, so I use a loaf tin for a half recipe. And this is a one pound loaf tin. Um, and the resulting brownie was, yeah, it's two inches, two, about two inches thick. Um, so you could use a two pound um, loaf tin. And, you know, then then it would be bigger. And of course, you know, you'll be making um, double the amount that I'm making. So I'm making a half recipe today. Okay. Um, but, you know, I've got tins in here that I use. Oh, this, this is a very good trick. Sorry, this is a very good trick. I shouldn't be talking into the cupboard because you're not going to hear me if I talk into the cupboard. Okay, so we've got one like this. So I think that that, that would be a good size. This would be a good size so i think that this is around like 25 by 25 um so but again i would line it i would definitely line it uh personally um and <laughs> um and also there is another option which is that you can use muffin tins and there now if you do want to play around with this recipe and not use ground flour you've got another option so, uh, because we're using gram flour, you know, the taste of raw gram flour is uh, pretty much like the grossest thing ever. Like, it's so disgusting. Really, really, really disgusting. Which means that when we make our brownies, we really do want to cook the, the flour out. But if you use another flour, what you can do is you can make a kind of like cheats, uh, like a brownie fondant, uh, by using one of these muffin tins. And so what you can do is you can put your brownie um, batter into here and then slightly undercook them and so what you'll be doing or what the result will be will be around the outside it will be firm and then in the center it will still be gooey um, and so 
you really do need a muffin tin to be able to do this or a cupcake tin whichever uh, you can't you can't really do that technique in a pan like that so there is that option but I would only suggest that for people who aren't going to use ground flour uh, because ground flour when it's raw is disgusting um, but that is that is an option and there was a family that I used to cook for where their kids would absolutely love uh, brownies that were gooey in the middle and the only way you can do them is with a muffin tin it's with a muffin tin so uh, on to our recipe uh, let me just see if we've got any questions um so uh there's a justine says there's a lot of chocolate in this yes yes there is there is i'm sure you approve um so basically like with a brownie recipe it is <sighs> any brownie or any good brownie in my opinion is basically a method to get melted chocolate and kind of bulk it out and give it some kind of form in order to get into your mouth. And so really the main experience that we want of a brownie is the melted chocolate. And that's why melted chocolate makes up such a huge amount of it. And it's only a small amount of flour. So we just need enough flour to help it stick together. That's all, that's all the flour does. It doesn't, um, it doesn't really do anything else. Um, so that's, yeah, so a brownie recipe is essentially, is essentially that. Um, okay. Uh, right, sorry, I'm just reading a question. Um, don't try, I got tired to milk the omelette. Uh, at last, I think you don't need to cover in chocolate. Well, I mean, you could if you want to, you know, chocolate on chocolate on chocolate. Um, and Justine said, my brownie was gluten free until I made homemade biscuits. Okay. <laughs> And Denise said it's silicon, okay. Yes, it is. So if you you know, sometimes like, we've got pans just like that, but that are silicon. But what I would say is um if it's quite a wide one like this, then just be wary of it wobbling around. Um so what I would do is if I do have like a wobbly um silicon tray or silicon um mould, you know, I've got um like donut pans that are made of silicon. Um I put it onto the baking tray and then I pour the batter in and then I take it to the oven rather than just pouring the batter into here and then trying to take it to the oven and it wobbling everywhere. Same if you've got a muffin, a muffin tin that's silicon too. Um, okay, so um, let's get on to making our recipe. Um, and the first thing that we need to do is um, we need to melt our chocolate. Okay, um, so we'll get that on whilst we talk about the rest of the ingredients. Sarah said, is it okay to use avocado oil? I will make an exception to use oil today, I think. Yeah, it's absolutely fine, it's absolutely fine. I mean, to be honest, Sarah, as well, I think you could try it with, um, I think you've used uh, apple, apple puree before. Um, so, you know, that would be an option. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop my chocolate in here, and the greater surface we give it, the quicker it will melt down. Right, okay, and so I was just checking to see if we've got any more questions. Okay, and then we have uh, some just neutral tasting oil. I've got sunflower oil today. You can use rapeseed oil. Um, if you don't mind the flavor of it, then in this type of dish, then even organ um, uh, olive oil will be fine to make sure it's not, it's not too bitter. Um, and then we have some plant milk here. You can use whatever plant milk you want to use. Absolutely fine um you know it, do, it doesn't really matter at all and then we have some vanilla extract so in a recipe like this it is better to use um just vanilla essence um rather than the pods because the pods are extremely expensive the only time that i ever use the pods is when you can really see them um because you know it's nice to see those flecks um and you know in a recipe like this we're not going to be able to see the flecks uh, and Justine says, why do you not melt the chocolate in the microwave? Don't just shoot me. I don't melt the chocolate in a microwave because I don't have one. <laughs> so simple answer to that. Uh, yes, but of course you can. And that's a very, very good, good point as well. I should say that for those of you guys who do have um, a microwave, then you can. And you will see, or you may, you may have seen, let me just bring you over here again you may have seen that my bowl isn't hovering above the pan. So quite often we will see in 
um, recipes that it says make sure that the bottom of the bowl doesn't uh, touch the bottom of the pan. The reason for that is just to make sure that you don't burn the chocolate because burnt chocolate is is gross for a start, and you just waste a load of chocolate, and it makes the the room smell, etc., etc. Um, so that's the only reason why those instructions exist. But because I'm right here, like literally right here, it's not going to burn. It's not going to burn. I'm keeping an eye on it. I'm making sure um, that any of the unmelted chocolate that's on the top can just get poked down to the bottom. So it's not going to burn. It's not going to burn. But that's the reason why you will see that in a lot of recipes. So you can use a microwave to melt chocolate. You don't need to put it in a bowl of water or anything like that. You can just put the bowl of chocolate into the microwave. Um, but I would say um, do it in small bursts. Do it in very, very small bursts. And when I was a, uh, working as a petition chef in a, in a restaurant, um, I would use a microwave to melt the chocolate because, you know, it's just like the quickest, the quickest method. And of course we had a microwave there. I hate to kind of burst your bubble, but pretty much like 99.9% .9 of restaurants, even the fancy ones, use microwaves and deep fat fryers a lot, like a lot. Okay, so Doug, Doug is here. Um, okay, uh, Sarah said, I actually even put the applesauce here, but thought you would tell me off and that maybe make it too heavy, but you think it's okay, I definitely prefer it. Yeah, I think it's gonna be fine. I think that's going to be fine. I mean, you do have to remember that with a recipe like this, a brownie, we're not asking it to rise or anything like that. So if it is going to be a bit heavy, that's that's okay. That is okay. You know, we don't want it to be like light and fluffy. So if the apple sauce is, is a bit heavy, then, then I think that that's fine. Um, and Joss said, what's the difference between vanilla extract and vanilla essence? Nothing. Actually, nothing. It's just in, an interchangeable word. Um, so in some packets, some bottles, they'll say extract and some will say essence. Uh, there's a difference between the um, paste. So I do have paste as well. And so paste is, um, as you would think, it's you know, a little bit liquidy, um, but it's got the seeds in there as well. So I would use that if I was making something like a vanilla cream, where you're going to see the flex. Um, and it's expensive, it is very expensive, but you use like a small amount of it, so. Um, and let me just see if there's any questions. Right, okay, so let's get back over here. Oh, sorry, Sarah said, so do you recommend lining the tray with butter or do you use flour, if not using paper? I would say line it with butter. Line it with butter, Sarah. Okay, so. Um, yes, we, I, I have my sugar here, so you guys can use whatever sugar you uh, feel comfortable using. Um, I've got Rapadura sugar here today, which is very similar to coconut sugar. Um, you know, it's one of the more, least processed sugars uh, and very, very caramelly as well. And then we've got our cocoa or cacao. So I've got raw cacao, and for any of you guys who are into nutrition, you know, that's a really, really great option. For you, um, it can be a bit expensive, so uh, but I absolutely love uh, raw cacao, and I do notice the difference. Uh, but you can use cocoa powder as well, and we've got um, some baking powder here. This is my gluten-free uh, baking powder from uh, Doves, and then last but not least, we have our gram flour. So gram flour and chickpea flour, the words are used interchangeably, uh, but I actually think that a lot of people who are using the word chickpea flour. Um, they're actually using it in the wrong context because this is ground flour, which is also known as besan flour, um, and it's it can be a mix. So let me just get my bag out. So this is one of the types of ground flour that I have, and it says here that it is yellow split peas and chickpeas. That's what it says here. But I have actually also read, and I think we've spoken about this before, that chickpeas, there we go, see if you guys can see that, there we go, just about, that the chickpeas that are used are slightly different to the chickpeas that we would, um, say for example, like make hummus with. Okay. okay, so whilst this, whilst our chocolate is melting, we can literally just put everything else into the bowl. So it really doesn't matter what order you 
where, what order you're going to put this in. It really doesn't matter. Um, uh, Carlin said my local shop is out of dark chocolate. Can we use cacao nibs? And said, no, you can't, unfortunately. Because the thing is, like, with our chocolate, it has not just the cacao in there, but it has um, the oil and the sugar and we need, and the, um, the cocoa butter. So we do need dark chocolate in this recipe. Uh, and Justine said that she just realized that you're gonna have two, two trays of brownies. Good for you, so you didn't do half recipes then. That's just me. Okay, so we're just gonna pop all of our ingredients into our bowl. As I said guys, it really doesn't matter what order you do this in. And Joss is quite right in saying, and the problem is, question mark. Oh, and Colleen said, oops, forgot to put the oven on. Actually, babe, I forgot to tell you. Uh, so the oven is 180 degrees Celsius, 300 degrees, 360 degrees Fahrenheit, gas mark four. And it will need around um, 15 to 20 minutes. So it really depends on how big yours is. Mine took 15 minutes only. Um, and you do, you do need to um, just make sure that it doesn't overcook, okay? So that's one word of warning, and one of the things that we have to bear in mind when we're making brownies is we don't want it to overcook. Um, and so you've really got to stick to that time, um, because it's not like a cake where you can take it out of the oven, you can um, press it and see if it um, springs back. So of course like, that's the way that we tell if a cake is done, but we can't do that with a brownie because it won't spring back. So what we're looking for is for the top to um, to look cooked. Um, and I, I don't know if you guys can see all this one. Let me bring it over. And Karna's just asked where the rainbows are, so then you'll get to see. Okay, so with my one, you see here, it's glossy. Yeah, but it's still dense. So we don't want it to overcook, because it might actually puff up a bit as well if it cooks too much. Okay, so, back to our, oh, bowl, there we go. Okay, so let's pop in all of the other ingredients. Oh, Colleen says, my rule with brownies is when you can smell them, they're done. That's a great, that's a great method, I like that. Uh, Alison says, do you ever use Dutch cocoa powder in brownies? Yes, yes, sometimes. Sometimes, but I actually, I, I really do like um, raw cacao. So it is one of one of the treats to myself, but. Okay, so we've got our vanilla essence in there. And then we can just pop our flour into the bowl. Sugar. There we go. <laughs> like a little sandcastle. Uh, cocoa or cacao and then our baking powder so you guys will be adding one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and I'm adding half of that because I'm doing a half recipe today okay Okay, so Justine said I put aquafaba in a brownie the other day, trying to veganize it. It ended up bubbling water. Ooh. Okay, so this chocolate is just about done. I'm just mixing it around a bit just to get the pieces to melt properly. And just a word of warning, if you are gonna stir it, and then you're going to leave your spoon there, then just be careful because the spoon might end up very, very hot and you might burn yourself. There we go. Okay, so we've got our mixture in here. So you can just mix it with a spoon if you want to. I'm going to use a whisk, um, uh, or part of a whisk, I should say, uh, which I really, really like using for things like this because um, you can get the lumps out very, very easily. Very, very easily. And here I'm using a really, really big bowl as well, by the way. So, you know, it is good to use a bowl that, you know, you've got a bit of space. You've got a bit of space. Oh, it was bubbly on top. That might be interesting, though. Oh, Virginia, thank you for popping in. Oh, it's lovely to get to know you. Thank you. 
Okay, so just mixing that in as well as I can. Well, that's pretty good going there. And then we're just going to have to mix in the uh, the melted chocolate into this bowl. But before I do that, I'm just going to prep my uh, my tin. And I've got my reusable my reusable baking sheet here, which will go into my loaf tin. So it needs a little bit of coercion, but there we go. And you just try and get it to stay there whilst, whilst I finish mixing the brownie. Right, there we go, there we go. Stay. So I'll just grab this out of the saucepan, being really careful using a tea towel because it is probably going to be quite hot. So all of the chocolate can just go into our bowl now, a nice big bowl. Okay, and with the with the bowl that we have melted the chocolate in, we don't need to get rid of that, okay? We can use the chocolate that's in there, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment once we get this into the oven. Right, there we go, and quick as you can, pop it into the pan. And the reason for that is that the longer we leave it, the thicker it will get. And then it can just be a bit more difficult to handle, basically. Okay, here we go. And just grab a spoon to get the rest of this out. So, of course, because we've used the ground flour for this. You're not going to want to lick the bowl out. I'm sorry about that. Because it is like, you know, one of the best bits is being able to lick the bowl out, but you won't want to. Trust me. I mean, you can try it. You can try it. Because I know like a few of you won't believe me. It's like when uh, when you're in a restaurant and they bring you your food and they say, oh, the plate's really hot. And then what do you do? You touch it. Okay, there we go. So once it is in, our tray just try and flatten it make sure that you you've got you you've got the brownie into the corners as well there we go okay so now i'm going to pop this into the oven for just 15 minutes for me. So what time are we on now? So, okay, at 22, I'll be able to take this out. So just popping it into the middle of the oven. Right, there we go, guys. Right now I can see if we've got any more questions. Okay, so, <sighs> Justine said that, yeah, she made that, that grand flower mistake never again, because it looks so nice. It looks so tasty and chocolatey, but, uh, Okay, um, yes, so on to what we can do with this chocolate. So it is very tempting um, to, just get your finger in there, uh, but <laughs> what we can do is we can scrape this out and we can actually use it as decoration as well. So actually let me get a plate to put this on um, and you guys can go to the overhead cam so you can see a bit more of what I'm doing. So this is this is my bowl from uh, the the here's one I made earlier, and so we can just use another spoon to scrape all of these bits out. And what we end up with is these lovely chocolate curls which, you know, you can buy them like this because people really like to decorate cakes with them, but they are so easy to make. They're so easy to make. But I did pop my um, my bowl in in the fridge. So, you know, the, the colder it is, the better. Okay. 
There we go. So we can get quite quite a few out of there. There we go. So guys who are cooking along at home, let me know how you're doing because I'm hoping that your brownie has just been put in the oven. Okay, so any bits of chocolate that are there, let's make sure that we get them off and then we can use them as decoration later. Right. Same with that and then same with these as well, look. Oh no, sorry, my head was in the way. <laughs> okay, so we can make a curl just by scraping one spoon along another that's been dipped in chocolate. There we go. That's a really good one. Oh my gosh, that's a great one. I like that. I like that. Definitely. Yeah, so we're just getting some really nice shapes off this. There we go. So don't don't throw that um chocolates in there away. I know that you won't probably anyway. You'll probably just need to <laughs> Carleen says that hers is in the oven and that she's using an 8 by 8 stone pan. Great. Um, and Fabiola in the oven just now. Uh, and Christine says, despite years of cooking, I've just found out that there are different cinnamons. Um, so do I need both? To be, to be honest, right, it really depends with cinnamon what you're going to use it for and also how particular you want to be about certain recipes that you make. Um, but you know, I would say taste them. If you can't really tell much difference, then don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Okay, there we go. We've got some really nice curls that we can pop onto our brownie later. Um, but actually, just to say, with your um, decorations, do wait until your brownie is completely, complete, completely cold. Um, uh, not cold, but you know, room temperature. It doesn't have any heat left in it at all before you start decorating it. Okay, and that is um, that goes the same for cakes as well. Always, always, always. Um, so if you are having to make um a decorated cake for you know a celebration or anything like that, then do always bear that in mind that the cake needs to be um, completely cooled down before you put any decoration on it. So particularly when I'm using things like um, these chocolate curls, of course, you know, it's going to melt it. But even if, you know, you're just putting like icing sugar on it, um, or even like a jam filling or anything like that, um, you want to make sure that it's cooled down completely. So you do have to um, make a, a decorated cake, you know, you need to start it well ahead of time. Um, and you know, what I would always do is, is if somebody wanted me to make a cake, I would make the, the sponges, um, or in this case, you know, the brownie, the day before, so that I knew that it was completely cooled down, and then the following day, um, I would do the, the decoration. Um, so do just bear that in mind. Uh, so a few of you have got them in the oven, and Colleen said my cat supervised my decoration making. Batteries may be involved. Oh, I'm very looking forward to seeing that. Uh, Connie's are baking now, then heading out to work. We'll decorate tonight and post race. Good, good, good. That's great. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, and let's just see if there are any more questions. I don't think that you have any more questions for you. Um, and we can wait until the, um, the brownies are ready. So I think that we just have another like 10 minutes or something like that. Uh, Lara says, just got mine in the oven, juggling Instagramming the steps while with keeping on track. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you for doing that, Lara, that's amazing. And Gloria is also joining in with us today, that's amazing. Uh, and Karen, hers in the oven, good, good, good. Um, Paul says, I'm looking for confirmation. I understand this 101st episode is the last of the not a day being missed, I like that, uh, Facebook Lives since the 24th of March. I understand the next Facebook Live episode 102 will be this day week on Thursday the 9th of July. And the Facebook Live episodes will continue on Thursdays, Fridays and Saturdays for the foreseeable future. Yes, you've got it absolutely right there, Paul. Uh, thank you for that. So we will be taking a short break. Uh, Katie has moved. She has moved, so she's in Cheshire. Uh, but I think that she is surrounded by boxes at the moment. Uh, so she's just in the process of moving and, you know, nesting, which I absolutely love. I 
to admit, I absolutely love nesting. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, and, and I've just obviously, you know, started this uh, online pro shop course. So I want to make sure that these guys are well looked after and on their way. And then we can reconvene on the 9th. And I think I do know what I'm going to make you guys, make with you guys. So I'll be sharing a picture of that um, as soon as I can so that you guys can get the ingredients. And we will do our best to make our shows more interactive. So more like cook-alongs with you guys actually cooking along with us live. Um, so, uh, Christine's is in the oven. Good, good, good. Glory's is, uh, my chocolate decorations are blobs. That's okay. That's absolutely fine. Um, and yes, so... Um, I'm just going to check my brownies in the oven if there aren't any more questions for the moment. I hope you're all getting on okay with your brownies. So I would say that, you know, because I'm making a half recipe um, and you know, it's a fairly smallish amount, um, then 15 minutes is fine. But you guys may want to cook yours for around 20 minutes. Um, but let me just have a look at our brownies. Okay, so let's just bring you guys the overhead cam, so you can see, this is still a little bit too glossy, it's good in there though, here we go, and I, um, it's not sticky anymore, so when I touch it, it's not, it's not um, coming off on my fingertips at all, so that's good, that's good but I can feel it's just a bit too liquidy just underneath the surface. So I'm gonna give it another five minutes. There we go. And it means I can ask you guys a question. Uh, so Denise is that she's loved cooking with us today. Um, and I know that there's a few of you actually who um, have been watching for a long time, but it took you quite a long time to, um, to do the actual cook-alongs and cook along with us live. So I'd really like to know are there any things that we could do better um, to enable or to encourage like, more people to cook along with us live? So is there anything that we could do? Um, I know I know that sharing the ingredients list earlier than we have been doing would be one thing, definitely, definitely. Um, and also having them in a place that you guys can find as well. I think that that's gonna be one of the keys to us getting more people to cooking along. Uh, Denise said, being slightly OCD, everything was measured out and chocolate melted. Good for you, well done. Um, yes, that does help, it does help massively. Glory says, seven minutes for me, but as it's a fan oven, I need to watch it for now. Yes, absolutely, so if you guys have a fan oven, then always reduce the amount, uh, sorry, reduce the temperature with Celsius, then I think like from 180, you would probably want it on 160 if you've got a fan oven. Um, so, I'm just going to eat some chocolate while we're talking. Uh, so nice. So yeah, I really, really, really like thin, very, 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 very thin chocolate. Always reminds me of Easter eggs. Uh, Denise says, you are very calm and explain everything beautifully. <laughs> well, I try to. I try to. It really helps if I um, stop, like, changing the words around. I know, I know I do that sometimes. I know I do that sometimes. Uh, but yes, uh, uh, Gloria says yes, 160 degrees uh, for a fan oven. Okay, so Colleen said, my only obstacle has been the time difference. I think you've done everything right in getting us to cook along. So actually, interestingly, um, uh, interestingly, um, uh, we did do a poll that asked you guys, you know, what days of the week you would like these lives to be on and also what time. And everybody said midday. Everybody still said midday, like pretty much, pretty much. Um, Cause I did think, you know, maybe we should make it like later in the day so that people in America, you know, it isn't like too early for you. Um, so, but we could, we could do the odd one a bit later. Um, and Ingrid said the answer ice cream to eat brownies with is the winner. I don't even know what that's about. <laughs> And Paul, thank you for letting people know how they can share these. Uh, Christine said, I've loved your cook-alongs. I'd love to know what measuring jug you use for the liquids. Um, I can only take a best guess, say 110 millilitres of oil. 
So, what do you mean with this recipe? Yeah, so it's 110 ml of oil, so I'm not really understanding that. Um, but yeah, the measuring jug is just this little one that I use here. I mean, it doesn't say 110 milliliters on it, if that's what you mean. It doesn't say that, but I just have to kind of like guess that it's slightly above the 100 mark. Um, and uh, Justine said, who's been watching longest? There's a competition for you. Um, and Deborah said, I've loved your shows and learned so much. Have a well-deserved rest. It will be an active rest, but yes. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will. Uh, and Justine said, I started watching when it was banana skin bacon and thought you were crazy. Thanks, Justine. <laughs> Uh, and Denise said the first episode was watching the Easter Bunny oh I love the Easter Bunny that's such a cute one that's such a cute one. Oh, and Connie said it's okay the time works the time works that's good 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 um and Khan said I joined midway um okay and and yeah he's been making some of our recipes for his mum he likes them now which is really really great um Gloria said how best to store ground flour in the fridge I just have mine in my cupboard um I know was it Katie the other day actually? She was talking about the bugs that you can get in flour, but actually they are just in gluten flour. Um, and gosh, what are they called? I can't remember what they're called now, but they are, I mean like the, when uh, those bugs happen, like they get into everything, into everything that actually contains gluten. Uh, but if it doesn't contain gluten, then you're fine. Um, so I just keep my gram flour in, my cupboard down here, but then I do use it regularly. I I go through it fairly quickly, um, and also our freezer is and our fridge is full. It's full. Um, uh, and Connie said that she made the bacon. Good, good, good. Um, and Anthony has been watching me since Periscope. That's impressive. That is very impressive. So a very, very, very long time ago. Anthony, how many years ago was that? I did Periscope. And so Periscope, for any of you guys who don't know what Periscope is, it uh, preceded Facebook Live. And essentially it was what Facebook Live does. Uh, it was an app where you could just, you know, um, record yourself live and anyone anywhere in the world who also had that app would be able to see you. And it was really, really great in some ways because you would open the app and then there would be a picture of the world a map of the whole world uh, and you could just click on any of these little red dots and you would be able to see you know a 12 year old boy like break dancing in his bedroom which is awesome really really awesome um, because it opens you up to um, connecting with people that you wouldn't normally have connected with really really great idea however Periscope really really suffered because um, women got a lot of harassment, women got a hell of a lot of harassment, um, because, you know, you'd be uh, talking to your phone and, you know, demonstrating a recipe, blah, 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 and you'd be able to see all these comments actually on the screen, and then you'd get trolls, and yeah, it was, it, it the anti-vegan stuff I was expecting, but the sexual harassment was like another thing, so Facebook Live has been great because it means that the only people who are watching me are people who have already connected with me and are into what I'm doing. It isn't, you know, um, these trolls at all. Um, so, you know, that was one of the bad, one of the bad things about Periscope. But it did open me up to uh, just being able to like see lots of people around the world and them seeing you. So at one point, I had like 600 people watching one of my recipes, which was amazing, amazing. Okay. Ah, uh, sorry, I've missed loads of questions here. I'm sure. I, oh, Gloria says they're called weevils. Yes, that's it. Uh, and Christine said, uh, I was just wondering uh, if you use something really accurate for the liquids. No, 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 no. I mean, the thing is like with a recipe like this, it doesn't really matter if it's, you know, 112 or 108 milliliters. Um, so don't worry about that too much. Um, Joseph, thank you for giving us something to look forward to in self-isolating. It's been an absolute pleasure, an absolute pleasure. Lynn said, uh, providing gram equivalents would be helpful. I think we do, we do, uh, we do give gram. Do you mean for the milliliters, for the liquid? So if, you, if you're talking about um, converting uh, liquids into grams, I never ever do that because it's not accurate. Uh, but with the weight measurements, that is always in grams. 
Uh, Glorious, I think it's going to be the full 15 minutes for me. I think I need to get this out of the oven now, actually. So I'm just going to pop my tea towel here. And let's bring you guys to the overhead cam and we can see how this is doing. There we go. Okay, so this is done. And I'm just gonna hold it up to you guys. And I can tell that it's done from the way that it feels. There's a slight bounce to it, which is fine. And it's just, I can feel that inside, it's not as liquidy as it was. So that's what I'm looking for. And I get to know the sheen and how the sheen on it changes. And that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so we do want this to cool down completely before we eat it. <laughs> or if you can resist it for that long. Um, or before we put any decoration on it. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. Really, really good. Really good. It's puffed off a little bit, but I think that it, it will go down. It will go down because the one that I made earlier uh, did go down. There we go. So... This is my hair's one that I made earlier. Um, and just to see if I've missed any questions. Um, Anthony says that, he, yeah, he found me when I, he was first looking for vegan recipes. Uh, do you remember what year that was in, Anthony? Um, Patricia says, uh, the live's been really great to try new recipes. Good, good, good. And, uh, and she's joining the course because of it. That's great. That's great. Paul said that he sadly missed the first date on the 24th of March. That's okay. That's okay. But I think you were the earliest one to watch us, actually, Paul. Uh, Karen said, I started watching about four years ago and at the vegan shows as well. So I've done a lot of uh, the vegan festivals, uh, getting up on stage and showing people how to make burgers, mainly. Uh, and Colleen said, been watching since the second cook-along. Not sure how I stumbled across the page, uh, but I'm so glad that I did. That's lovely. That's lovely. And Gloria says, two minutes. <laughs> two minutes also, nearly there, nearly there. Barbara says, I'm watching from a really chilly Cape Town, South Africa, and I'm enjoying watching this. Oh, I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. Uh, it's a lovely part of the world. Uh, Justine said, wait, wait, wait. What about decoration of your brownie? There. Decorated it. I can't decorate that one. Do you remember? We have to let it cool down. Okay. Um, and, da -da -da -da. and Denise says, you know what I'm going to ask. I know what you're going to ask. I know. Um, and <laughs> you don't have to ask, you don't have to ask me twice. Not with this. I'm very excited about this. Uh, Jess said, "Oh well, that's fab. Thanks, babe. Thanks, babe. By the way, this is dinner. Okay. <laughs> Hope you don't mind." Um, Elky said, "I was fortunate to tune in on your first day when you made the one pot meal, but was unable to join." For the last several weeks. Oh, well, thank you for coming back. That's lovely. I look forward to doing some catching up and making more of your recipes. I really enjoy being a part of this community. That's really, really nice. Thank you. Thank you. And so over the next few weeks, um, and over the next few weeks, um, what I'll be doing is when we aren't doing the lives, um, whichever days they are, um, we'll be sharing, resharing some of our old live recipes because I know that some of you, uh, you might miss them. And um, you know, there are times when like we're having like really hot weather, and I'm like, this is a really, really great opportunity to share with you guys like our picnic recipes or our summer recipes or you know the kombucha cocktail recipes or you know that type of thing. So we will be resharing them because uh, I know that they can be a little bit tricky to find. Um, and. Uh, Lara says 15 minutes of baking is just enough time to wash everything up. <laughs> That's good, Kerry. <laughs> You're on it. You're on it. Uh, and Lara said, How firm slash sh sorry, how firm slash soft should they be? Okay, so I'm gonna try to describe this, but it is a little bit difficult. It is a little bit difficult. So, when I first took them out of the oven to test them out, and it was like about halfway through, when I pressed down on it, there was like no resistance at all at all like it was it, I could just feel that it was liquid inside whereas when I press on them now like it's it's not as spongy as a cake would be but it's kind of going in that direction does that make any sense whatsoever 
<laughs> See, this is why I prefer teaching people how to cook in real life because I could just say to Lara, here, touch that. That that's how it should feel like. That's how it's very difficult to describe. It is very difficult to describe. But you do have to look out for the sheen of it as well. Excuse me. Because that does change. That does change. It's kind of difficult for me to show you on this overhead cam because I could see that it wasn't it wasn't showing up very well at all. At all. But you know, at the start it's incredibly, incredibly glossy. And then you can see it just um the that sheen changes. Um Okay, so, but there is there is a bit of a margin of error as well, actually, for brownies. So if they're slightly undercooked, then they're going to be a bit gooey. If that happens, you know, you cut into it and it's still gooey, you can pop it back in the oven. Absolutely fine, no problem at all. The thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to overcook it and then it becomes like cake, okay? So it's okay to slightly undercook it. So if you're a bit unsure about the time, then I would say undercook it wait until it has you know it's a bit cool enough to handle then cut into it usually in the middle as well you know poke a knife in the middle if it's still raw in there then whack it back in the oven absolutely fine absolutely fine okay so we've got a few late latecomers J um james and harshad thank you for joining us uh on this very very special 100 month show 100 month show in a row 101st show in a row Get it right. Okay, so um, I think that this is everything. And uh, Anthony was saying uh, Periscope was, yeah, back in 2015. That was a long time ago. It feels like a lifetime ago now. And Elke asked a very, very good question. Uh, she says, does the toothpick test work for brownies too? It doesn't. It doesn't because that's the thing. Brownies are kind of a bit gooey on the inside. Um, so that isn't really um, a good test for it. Um, so you do have to go with what it looks like by sight, but that's why I'm a bit more specific as well with this um, recipe with um, the amount of time in the oven. Uh, and Lara says, uh, I think they are done. They are going to be for a friend's birthday tomorrow. Dropping them off minus a few that I have to taste for quality control purposes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Carla said, can we have vegan, vegan pizza recipes and other fast food delights? after the break. Yes, so any any uh, requests that you have, um, we have a post in the community hub, so please pop them in there. Um, and then um, every now and again, we go into there and we see what you guys um, are wanting us to make, and then we will we'll, uh, we'll bring it into, into the recipes that we're making. So I know a few of you asked for beetroot recipes, so I think the first one I'm gonna do when we come back is a really lovely, very bright beetroot recipe. Okay, now I have to try this and stop talking. <laughs> so, so I'm just gonna break off a bit. So I, I'm not gonna have the fondant icing because the fondant icing is like, I mean, to me that is like so much sugar, so much sugar in the fondant icing. So Jeff, I'll leave that one to you and you can just stay out for like several days in a row. <laughs> okay, so let me just bring you guys See if we can come over here. There we go, because I want to show show you how fudgy and lovely that is. So that's what we're looking for. So we want it to look fudgy and kind of compact. We don't want it to look cakey. Okay, that's what we're looking for. And <laughs> of course I'm gonna try it, of course. Oh. <laughs> I can't actually talk now. Mm -mm, I can't talk now. Mm. It's really rich. Really, really, really so rich. So it's a type of um it's a type of thing you need a glass of plant milk on the side. Definitely, definitely with this. Really, really yummy, but very, very rich. So you don't need a huge amount of it at all. Because it is, because it's so dark chocolatey, you know, we've got the dark chocolate in there, and I use 85% by the way, and then we've got the cacao in there too, so there's a whole load of dark chocolate gone in there, so it's very very rich, very very rich, mm. and Louise says that looks so good, it is, it really really is, and Patricia says if it's gooey, would it, ta would it taste the gram flour, yeah so if you have undercooked it, 
then the likelihood is that it's going to taste of the ground flour. So you do need to make sure that it's cooked out properly. Um, so if you do want to go down the route of making gooey brownies, like I mentioned before, you know, with the muffin tray, then I would use a different type of flour. Uh, and Justine said, do you get all your ingredients from Waitrose? Um, I actually get all of my ingredients from Ocado and Riverford. So we get our Riverford veg box and then everything else is from Ocado. Uh, but um, yeah, I've been using them for the longest time and they actually have a really, really, really great selection of um, vegan products and organic products as well, uh, which is one of the reasons why I love them. So any kind of um, new vegan products out on the market, they tend to have them, uh, which I really, really like. Um, okay, so I think that's it guys. Thank you for joining me for the 101st show in a row. Absolutely brilliant uh, to have had this uh, this time with you. You have made me smile and laugh every single day. Um, and so that's why um, it's really important for me to let you guys know how much I appreciate that and how much I appreciate you and the lovely community that you've helped me make. Um, so I will see you back on the 9th. Um, for another live recipe and then we'll get going with our three days a week um, and of course Sunday which is your turn to make all of the recipes that we've shown you that week and share photos in the community hub um, so thank you thank you thank you a million times over and as always as always and forever have a lovely day <laughs>